Hi, actuaries. This is Sam from examPA.net. What is decision tree pruning, also called cost complexity pruning? In this lesson, we'll show you exactly. This begins by the decision tree algorithm. This is a forward stage-wise machine learning algorithm. Now, you remember from GLMs that forward selection starts with no variables and then continues to have them. Decision trees work in the same way. They first select a single variable and uh, then continually make the tree more complex. Trees are understood uh, actually by an upside down tree. They're usually drawn so that the root is at the top and then the branches go downwards. They are greedy algorithms because they want to be very complicated, but we as actuaries need to simplify them. Uh, so the decision tree first works by selecting a variable in a split point. Like it might look at, um, let's say you're predicting health costs. It would ask, is age equal, is age greater than 30? And is gender equal to male? If that's the case, it will then create a split. Then it's recursive because it will look at each of those new nodes and repeat that process. It will most likely select different variables, but sometimes it could select the same variables. Um, and then uh, once it continues growing more and more branches, it eventually, eventually reaches a stopping point. We call these the leaf nodes or the terminal nodes. And once it does, we then have to do the complexity pruning. Uh, this is because if we don't, we'll result in a model that's very high variance. It will be bad at making predictions for new data and it won't be very useful. So what we do is we uh, apply a complexity um, rule. So let's say that we're doing um, regression. So we're looking at the mean squared error um, for the different levels of the tree. These are called subtrees. A subtree is just a way of uh, drawing lines if you start at the top of the tree moving down and then um, taking your pen off the paper before you reach the leaf nodes. Um, so for each of these uh, subtrees, we look at the increase in the error metric. So if the mean squared error, you know, continues to get lower and lower and lower by a certain threshold, that's controlled by the CP parameter, complexity parameter, then we just keep dividing up the the tree uh, observations. Think about this like if you're working with healthcare patients. You start with 100 people, you first divide people up into 50-50, um, male equals true or not. And then for each of those 50, you, you divide them up into 75 or to 25, 25, and then you know 12 and 10 and so forth. Um, and then when you do the complexity pruning, you're looking at each of those subpopulations and comparing the mean squared error using the um, out of bag estimate. This means that uh, using bootstraps, you look at the, um, you compare the model's error um, based on the observations that it hasn't been trained on. And if it's doing a really you know, good job, if, if that subtree improves the mean squared error, then you keep that branch. And if the MSE is about the same, then you just trim that branch. And this has the effect of keeping the branches where it's doing a good job of um, reducing the error and uh, segmenting the observations based on the target variable, and then uh, getting rid of the branches that don't. So that's an explanation for what cost complexity pruning is. Don't fit your decision trees without it. Subscribe to this channel for the latest updates for exam PA. Go ahead and hit that like button and you'll get the latest tips 
for how to pass PA uh, delivered right to your inbox.